quite frankly, I thought that interview was even worse than Joe Biden's interview with Donald Trump. I mean, really, this race should be over. Hello, good people. It is Todd Shannon, data scientist, social commentator, getter of buckets. And what in the world did I just watch? What did I just watch? You know, I, I would say that this Kamala Harris interview with Brett Bear was a train wreck, but that would be an insult to train wrecks. This was like, with respect to the survivors of 9-11, this was like <laughs> Al-Qaeda flying their jets into the World Trade Center. This was so catastrophically bad for Kamala Harris. I cannot imagine how sane and rational people could walk away from that and say, yeah, I, I want that lady to be president. This was horrendous. I can't play you the whole thing, and I'm not going to play the whole thing. I encourage you to watch it in one sitting, if you can, if you can get through it, okay? Because it's frustrating to watch because Kamala Harris's strategy in this interview with Brett Baer was to basically not answer any questions, to filibuster and say, Donald Trump, 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 but Donald Trump, but Donald Trump. It's almost like she was doing like a, like a biography of Donald Trump. It's like, are you here to talk about Donald Trump or are you here to talk about yourself? And Brett Baer, I think, tried to give her a little, you know, he, he tried to make that clear at the end of it. It was a little bit too late at that time. But he was trying to say, you know, hey, I hope you got every, got a chance to say everything you wanted to say. We brought you here to talk about yourself. You talked a lot about Donald Trump. But he, <laughs> I don't know if that was any shade or he was just trying to be nice to her. But anyway, we are going to have a look-see at some of these exchanges uh, between Kamala uh, Harris and Brett Baer. And... We're going to start with the very first question, which is the question that everyone wants to talk about, really, when it comes to Kamala Harris, which is, why did you screw up the border? Answer me that, all right? So let's get right to that, because um, this, is, this is a fascinating uh, exchange. Immigration is one of the key issues that they're looking at this election, and specifically the influx of illegal immigrants from more than 150 countries. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a is, number. Do you but, think it's but, one million, three million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have it's an immigration system... It's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question. All right. So right off the bat, completely disrespectful to the audience, to Brett Bayer. She's right off the bat just saying, I am not going to answer your question. I guess she thought... I guess she thought maybe her advisors, her handlers told her, hey, Kamala, right after, off the bat, you got to take control of the, of the direction of the interview. Don't let him control the direction of it. He's going to ask you direct questions, and then you steer it in the direction that you want. But all that does, maybe they thought that made, made her look strong and uh, assertive, but really it just made her look evasive and like she didn't have good answers to very legitimate questions. And... This is, this is the first kind of disrespect that Kamala decides to show, and it just gets worse from here. I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies, most significantly the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead... Included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So, looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours of taking the oath, 
the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before, any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen, and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was and, essentially and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, ma'am. May I finish? May I so I, I, I don't, I don't want to show too much of it because I don't want to get like some sort of copyright strike or anything like that. But listen, the reason why Brett Baer cuts her off there is because Brett Baer is not a fool. He's not a moron. He knows that you're filibustering. And the entire point of the question is something that you in, intentionally dodged. And now you want to take it down to some other issue that is irrelevant to the question he was asking. He asked you very simply, why did you reverse the executive orders that Donald Trump had in place? Oh, we put a bill in front of Congress. I, 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 th this is what I'm saying. And, and Brett, Brett Baer actually asked her this later on in the video, uh, in the interview. And I, there again, I encourage you to watch it. He asked her flat out, said, why do you... Do you think the people are, the people are stupid? Uh, you know, <laughs> it, was about a, it was about another issue. But like... It was incredible how she just continues to disrespect the audience and disrespect Brett Baer like we don't know what she's doing. It's like it's like that old Cat Williams meme. It's like, he's like, Negro, do you know that I can see you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I just I don't I don't understand why she doesn't get this. But it gets like I said, it gets worse from here because not only does she filibuster and continue to go down this path of just not answering questions. But eventually in the interview, she becomes completely unglued. And uh, I, I really find this kind of interesting. Uh, he asked her about, you know, well, what are you, what are you going to turn, turn the page from? And she really gets upset about that. So let's have a quick look at this. President and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at Brett Bayer's face. This is incredible. I, I, I don't understand what she thinks she was accomplishing by saying, you and you, you and I both know what I'm talking about. He's like, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. What are you talking about? The question is about, you're saying you're the forward candidate. You're going to turn the page. What are you turning the page from? Well, <laughs> you know, you and I both know that Donald Trump, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. No, nobody knows what you're talking about. No one ever knows what you're talking about. But let's continue. Is that over the last decade... But people have become power. but listen over the last decade it is clear to me and certainly the republicans who are on stage with me the 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 former chief of staff to the president donald trump uh, the former defense secretaries national security advisor and his vice president one that he is unfit to serve that he is unstable that he is dangerous and that people are exhausted with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning and, and, and engaging in personal grievances and it being about him Madam instead Vice of President, the American people. People are case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's if not it's supposed as... to be. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided? The fifty percent? Are they stupid? What, oh what God, is it? I would never say that about the American. <laughs> Brett Bear is a beast. Shout out to Brett Bear. Let me get some air horns. Shout out to Brett Bear, man. He he really does masterfully navigate this because he knows what Kamala Harris is trying to do. She's trying to obfuscate. She's trying to dodge uh, questions and she's trying to take control 
of the narrative by filibustering and making this a referendum on Donald Trump when, uh, I don't know if she realized this, but she's been in power for three and a half years. People, and in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the, question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. Now, after this, she is going to come completely unglued. She tries to suggest that basically they're being dishonest in what kind of question he was answering. They show her a clip of Donald Trump addressing the supposed he's going to turn the, um, uh, the, the um, military on the American people, which is obviously nonsense. Um, but watch, watch how she becomes completely unglued in this next segment. This is incredible. Here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the President of the United States, in the United States of America, should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. L let me ask you this, no, Madam Vice President. You call Donald Trump. The you, you, of you that. call Donald Trump. Um, he's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable. Now, this is masterful because she walks right into this trap and she didn't even see it coming. This is like a chess match. The way Brett Baer transitions. After she became unglued with her furrowed brow and he was like, he is unfit. She's all angry and foaming at the mouth. And now she walks right into this trap. Watch this next question. I said, oh, you said he was, you said Donald Trump's unfit. You said he's unwell. He's, he's unhinged. You, uh, you apparently are quite perceptive about when someone is starting to lose their grip just a little bit. Now watch this question. Unstable, uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not Let stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> it wasn't, just to be clear, it wasn't a gotcha question. It was just a setup from a transition that she forced because she decided that to become unhinged. She wasn't, she didn't have her eye on the ball. She should have known that this question was coming. She should have known it. But she was so focused on trying to talk about how unhinged Donald Trump was and how apparently she can tell that by just observing him. When Brett Bear's like, you served beside Joe Biden the whole time. You didn't know he was, you know, coming unglued a little bit. She walked right into that trap and it was her own doing. But what does she say? Joe Biden. <laughs> you see that long pause. Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room. And he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe were Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. But is, you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is, George Clooney said within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought this Brett, was not the Brett, same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump, which is why the people who know him best, including 
leaders of our national security community have all spoken out, even people who worked for him in the Oval Office, worked with him in the Situation Room, and have said he is unfit and dangerous and should never be President of the United States again, including his former Vice President, which is why the job was open for him to uh, choose another running mate. So that is a fact. That is a fact. Madam Vice President, two more things. So you see Kamala Harris's strategy in this video, in this interview. Don't answer any questions. Don't take any accountability and just attack Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. And Brett Baer tries to, I think, I think Brett Baer tried to give her an, an opportunity to at least, there are many ways that she could have pivoted. There are many ways she could have answered and taken some accountability while also uh, not basically throwing, you know, Joe Biden under the bus. You know, there are ways she could have answered this questions about immigration. He actually even played, uh, and I encourage you once again to go watch it. He even played a video of one of the, uh, mothers of one of the uh, young ladies killed by an illegal immigrant and how she expressed that she thought that this was the result of the Biden-Harris immigration policy, that they weren't vetting people. And he asked her point, point blank, do you owe her an apology? She refused to apologize to those people. All she said was, I'm sorry that that happened to them, which is not the same thing. This was a disastrous, disastrous interview. And I cannot imagine how it's possible that she can or ever would be able to recover from this. But I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this. Did uh, did Kamala did did you do you think she did herself in? Um, I I I I actually thought this was more damaging to her than Joe Biden's interview or debate with Donald Trump when it became so evident that he wasn't mentally fit, that he wasn't there, and it became so evident how quickly she became unglued just by being asked simple questions about her administration. How's she going to sit across from hostile world leaders like Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin? This, this was, this was quite incredible, but let me know what your thoughts are. I am, I'm curious to hear. Uh, if you like this content, please like share and subscribe. And till next time, friends, God bless you.